over to our man Teddy Cakes at. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every, every trading day at his website, forever dash trading dash unlock.com teddy cakes dad good morning good morning tommy so like we have been what do you think of the action in crude man i'll give you a little i i'm i'm a little surprised myself after waiting to 94 bucks teddy last week end of last wednesday we're up 20 dollars right now man the run not continuing you might not be a mm -hmm. surprise what's your take on this action on crude man uh, well, last week I was saying it was just a corrective uh, profit-taking move, and we're right back where I thought we would be. Um, we're going to 150, and you know what? Odds are we're going to see. You know, I mentioned you know already months ago that 150 would be a longer-term target, and even 200 if the way things are going. So, um, and now that seems to be a, a consensus now. You know, and I think that that's very likely to happen. I mean, the surge in so many other commodities and everything else is just a. It's a domino effect. It's not stopping right now anytime soon, you know, especially with the new way the Fed's speaking now, too. The cost of carryover is going to explode over the course of the next year, you know. So, I mean, the cost of oil is going to go up, you know. So, I think, yeah, absolutely, the oil markets are supported. We're not going to see any type of reprieve in this whatsoever until, well, you overturn the mandate from, you know, January 20th of 2020. So, that's what we need. <clears throat> Now, currency. quite the run for sure to one four to one fourteen. Yeah. Let's jump to currency. So, with all the action going on, of course, mm -hmm. quite the move, man. Over the last few weeks in yields, just remarkable, man. One point seven mm -hmm. percent to two point four percent on the ten year. Um, well, what are you looking at for for forex markets to start things okay. off today? Well, that coupled with the oil, the I mean, remember. When we had the Fed announcement last week, we were all looking for the quarter point. We got it. Now, we, we've we talked about this for months before they even started. I said, I'm like, they need to do a half a point at a time. You know, some people say that's a little overzealous. Now that speech is coming out that they're going to start doing half points instead of quarter points. I mean, we're looking at we could see by the end of the year where interest rates will have been up, be up 2%. You know, I mean, that's a big jump considering that they've been very, very slow to act for the past couple of years to begin with. You know, so now this whole thing is driving the trend. So it's supporting the dollar. You know, I mean, between oil and the interest rates, it's really, really helping certain trends. Now, it, it's definitely weighing on the euro um, and the Swiss right now because of the Ukrainian conflict and stuff. Now you couple the, the uh, what's going on geopolitically you also throw in the higher interest rates you know and then you also throw in you know the price of oil this is making the euro us dollar look like it could be heading towards parity within the next couple of uh, months for sure you know unless there's some ease and tension between russia and also the ukraine that market's in a bear market now we have divergence though you know so we're going to see dollar strength in some currencies and dollar weakness in the others you know the australian dollar for instance and new zealand dollar those are bulls now you know they pretty much have bottomed the only thing that would change that is if well either they go back into covid lockdowns or if they have some kind of major shift in uh commodity pricing you know so we have dollar divergence you know i think this these trends are now set for the next couple of months, if not the next couple of years. You know, we're not looking to get out of this thing anytime soon. You know, we mentioned before about the Ukrainian thing, like nothing with Russia ends quickly. So yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't I would be very surprised if six months from now we're we're already past and through this conflict, you know, and everything is settled. You know, so I mean and this is starting to hit, you know, other markets too. You gotta realize that as, as oil continues to go up, I mean, I don't know how it is in Florida, but you can tell the roads here out in Chicagoland that during the day, people are they're making choices now. They're not just willy-nilly going out for coffee and going there and then this and that. Everyone's doing, I'm pretty sure, they have a list of things to do, and that's what they're doing, and then they're going home, you know? I mean, you can even see it in the restaurants, too, now on the weekends that it's the weather is getting better and you're not seeing restaurants overflowing with people now that everything is everyone can go out you know i mean even in cook county you can you don't need to have a vaccine passport you don't need to wear a mask you know so i mean it's uh kind of surprising you would everyone wanted to see a different reaction and i think the oil prices is going to suppress that but dollar strength is going to stay i mean we have uh as long as the fed is on this track it would be really hard to see the dollar get really hurt, you know, except for some of your commodity uh, uh, currencies like U.S. dollar Canada. 
very likely could be a bear over the longer run. You know, um, like I said, Aussie and New Zealand, those are setting trends. The U.S. dollar yen, now there's something where <laughs> you thought, if you thought I was happy last week, I mean, look at how it's up another $2 over the past week, you know. So that 122 price target, I think, is very viable now. We're just floating right below it. And if these trends are really solid and things stay this way over the course of the next six months to the next year, I mean, to see the yen up at 140 would not be out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, just remarkable moves, man. These Forex pairings up as you're talking about them, man. You put them on a weekly even. You don't have to, man, mm -hmm. because you could put them on a 15-minute. Uh, you could put them on an hourly. And this move, like you said, I got the dollar yen up here, man, just staggering, right, from 115 mm -hmm. to 121, like you said. But we were at 104 at the beginning of last year. Mm -hmm. and it just almost right. never stopped, man, the run that it's had. Remarkable. And I would agree, geopolitical tensions especially, but it's especially interesting that we're coming into a rate hike environment that isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, right. I was talking to our man Kevin Hinks to kick things off. I think we're all aware that the CPI numbers are going to be a little bonkers, at least for the next couple months, because gas prices are crazy, energy prices are crazy, food prices are still crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe as we get down the road, three, six months down the road, we might be dealing with some comps that will make it difficult to be dealing with some pretty crazy numbers. But the mm -hmm. Fed's hiking, man. They're hiking this year. The market said it with that 1.7 to 2% rise, 2.4% rise. So that's not going away anytime soon. And I agree. Right. Even if we get some kind of deal that I don't expect, Mm -hmm. They got a handshake deal and everything's over. That's not how it's going to go, man. There's going to be tensions. How are they going to break things up? Is is Russia going to get some of the separatist region, right? How does that play out? Mm -hmm. There's going to be tension there, man. Um, and they're probably going to be dealing with sanctions that's going to escalate things for the foreseeable future, no matter what, as Russia's right. a little bit isolated. And that's a scary proposition, no matter how they come out of this. I don't imagine it being rosy, man. The world's just not going to lift all those sanctions overnight um, right. after what's been done. So I, I, I agree that that's, that's going to persist. Um, mm -hmm. And it's almost time flies, as we all know, man. I mean, this right. has been going on for a month. That is crazy when you think about yeah. that the, the war has almost been going on for a month over there. Um, those poor people, you know, the, the citizens, right. really. I, I just Absolutely. can't imagine, you know, with young kids in my house, kids, the worst of it all, of course. Um, sure. But pretty, pretty wild stuff. Uh, right. We got about a minute here as we come in, Teddy. What, uh, as we come into, so next week we come into the non-farm payrolls, I believe, on April 1st, which is Friday. And then we get mm -hmm. some CPI numbers next week. You, do you factor any of that into what you're looking at? Or are we just kind of marching on right now because the market's kind of set regardless of what we mm -hmm. get in the next 30 days for debt or something like that? Uh, well, definitely the CPI. I mean, even months back, I said this six months ago, that as we move forward now, your your big economic numbers are once again very important now, like CPI, PPI, and what have you. And I think they're going to drive the bond market even more. They're going to help accelerate the uh, rise in interest rates. That acceleration in bonds, man. Notes. Yeah. Wow. I love Teddy, it. Teddy, <laughs> we appreciate the conversation as always, man. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.